Now let's take a look at the distal. Again, I'm going to come to the standing part of the line, and I'm going to start with one turn below the bridge, much like I did with the Swabish Prusik. But whereas a, Swab a Prusik configuration, I will change directions once I come above the bridge, now when I come above the bridge, I'm going to travel in the same direction, much like we do with our taut line hitch. And again here, I'll take four turns above the bridge. And really, with both the Swabish and the Diestel, the amount of turns above the bridge has to do somewhat with the length of our split tail. For myself, I like a four over one. Now notice here, I've really fashioned something of a taut line hitch. The line enters from one end and exits the other. Note here the bar on the diagonal. But unlike the taut line hitch, I don't want to sit down into this. What I want to do is I'm going to attach both ends back to the carabiner. This way, I won't have any of that rolling effect. In fact, I can also utilize the micro pulley, much as I did with the Swabish Prusik. But see here, because I'm loading both parts of the line, I won't have the rolling. And again, the distal, it loads nicely, it grabs readily, and much like the Swabish Prusik, I can break the knot easily with just two fingers after I've loaded it. And again, even though it's been loaded hard, I can tend the slack very nicely with my micro pulley. So this is kind of interesting because this really seems to be a variation of the taut line hitch, yet it has some much more favorable characteristics. Again, some characteristics that we'd really like in a climbing hitch. It grabs readily, yet it breaks easily. Here, this doesn't roll out. So both the Swabish Prusik and the Diesel are two good examples of some of the newer climbing hitches that are being used today. And again, they're gaining more and more popularity.